Many decision-making models that exist nowadays mean that you have to make a decision as to which one of the available options to use. There are rational models, intuitive models, rational iterative models, as well as 5, 6, 7 and even 9 step decision making models. Most however move through each of the basic stages in decision making. Define a situation, generate alternatives, information gathering, selection and action. A decision making model describes the method a team will use to make decisions. The most important factor in su successful decision making is that every team member is clear about how a particular decision will be made, who will be making the decision, how will team members be involved, by when and so on. Knowing these things allow team members to be fully informed participants in discussions. Will we be giving input to the team leader so he can make the decision or will we need to discuss this topic and come to an agreement during this meeting? This is an important point to make. This one is the model we are going to use here. And this because the decisions you make determine what you can accomplish, how you can accomplish it and at what cost. Often there are many factors to take into account. This makes it important to use a methodical approach which can help you to reach the best possible decisions. A thorough decision-making model contains five steps. The first step involves ensuring you are in the right context. This may mean you ensure your team sets appropriate ground rules to encourage participation and deliberation and you have the right people on a team to help you make a decision. The second step requires you to properly frame the issue that is to uh, define, understand and put into the context the issue at hand. If this isn't done, you are unlikely to make a suitable decision. Step 3 to 5 involve generating and evaluating alternatives and finally selecting the best option from these alternatives. A variety of decision-making tools can assist you during these three steps and these tools we will discuss until the end of this course. Stop this video lecture for a second and think about your approach to decision-making. How do you normally find the solution? And can you think of a time when you were part of a group that had to reach a decision? Did your group follow a steps-based process or take a different approach? If the approach was different, briefly try to describe it for yourself. Did the group consciously use any decision-making tools or techniques? If so, can you remember what kind of tools or techniques did it use? And finally, if your group did not use any tools and techniques, what kind of thinking or processing guided its decision? Thank you for taking some time to think about the before mentioned questions. Knowing how a particular decision will be made can also help a team plan their meeting agendas more effectively and lead to more collaborative team process. Most importantly, understanding how decisions will be made helps to build support for the final decision and active commitment to decisions implementations. Because effective teams work toward the fullest participation of each member, teams often use some version of a consensus decision-making model. When used appropriately, this model of decision-making can maximize the quality of teams' decision. Next, we are going to further explore the decision-making process and its specific tools and techniques.